Now, if you've ever touched a hot object or stepped on a sharp object and withdrawn your hand or foot, um, you will have experienced this uh, flex or reflex. Um, now, some textbooks call it uh, nociflexive or noci, uh, nociflexive reflex or nociceptive reflex or a withdrawal reflex. And we call it sometimes a nociceptive reflex because it is to do with uh, nociception uh, sensing uh, uh, fibers in our skin which detect a painful stimulus, a nociceptive uh, stimulus and, and cause us to um, experience the pain. Now, um, this is a protective reflex uh, and it's pretty obvious because it quickly removes the part of the body uh, from the vicinity of the offending object by contracting uh, appropriate muscles which in this case are usually flexor muscles um, and, and relaxing our extensor muscles. And what this does is pretty much allow us to be prevented from experiencing the pain. Now, in a similar way to our stretch reflex, we have both a primary and an inhibitory uh, response that are occurring. Uh, but the actual uh, response is, is slightly different when we get to our central nervous system level as we define a flexor reflex as a polysynaptic uh, reflex as opposed to our stretch reflex, which is monosynaptic. Now, the vigor of a reflex, of, of one of these uh, flexor reflexes, depends upon the strength of our stimulus. Um, for example, a weak pinch, uh, for example, produces maybe a flexion of our foot, um, a slightly stronger one, a flexion of both the foot and our leg, and a very strong pain reception, which was received by our nosy receptors in our skin, um, will produce maybe a flexion of both the foot, the leg, and even the hip. Now, this spread of the reflex with a stronger simulation is called irradiation, and, and it innervates various levels of our spinal column in order to innervate our various muscle groups and, and order for us to be um, protected from certain uh, painful stimuli. Now, uh, the position of the limb and, and the region at which this pain is experienced is, uh, is also very important in determining this response. And, um, and the exact nature of the limb movement and the final position of the limb vary upon the depending uh, on the site of stimulation pretty much. And this phenomenon is called the local sign. And it's, it's different for every muscle group depending on the nociceptor, depending on uh, various different things. And because of this local sign, the withdrawal of the limb from a damaging stimuli is usually appropriate for both a certain magnitude and the direction at which we uh, move our, our body. For example, if we step on our tack, um, we usually move our foot up in order to you know, be extracted from the stimuli um, in that certain area. Now, as we see in this diagram, uh, it's very similar to what we see in our stretch reflex, um, except in this reflex, we'd see a polysynaptic uh, response in our central nervous system. So, the pathway for a flexion reflex is illustrated in this diagram. Uh, we see the afferent limb, the afferent fibers, the primary afferent fibers which are coming from our skin. These are, are nociceptive uh, afferent fibers which detected a painful stimulus. For example, uh, in this diagram we see a tack entering the skin um, and this painful stimulus, as I said, as we know from our cell pathology, uh, uh, yeah, from our cell physiology, I mean, uh, it surpasses a threshold which uh, creates an action potential which is fired down our flexor reflex afferent fiber, which is our nociceptive fiber, and uh, travels towards our central nervous system. Now, this afferent fiber, as I mentioned in my stretch reflex, afferent is traveling towards the central nervous system, uh, enters via the uh, dorsal root ganglion, which we can see in this diagram indicative of our uh, pink flexor reflex afferent fiber, which you can see on the, on the video now and it enters into our dorsal root ganglion. Okay, um, this afferent fiber then synapses. We're going to be talking about the primary uh, response now. The primary response, as I said in our stretch reflex one, our primary response is the one that initiates a contraction of a muscle, the flexion of a muscle that allows us to uh, withdraw our body part from the harmful stimuli. Now, the, um, the, the afferent fiber synapses with an interneuron. This is what we call a, a primary interneuron, you could call it, uh, based on the fact that it does lead to the contraction of our muscle. Now, this interneuron uh, travels between the dorsal and the ventral horns uh, and then synapses again with one of our flexor motor neurons. An alpha motor neuron 
that is going to travel to our flexor uh, muscle and, and cause a, a contraction of that muscle and causing that limb, uh, whatever that limb may be, for example, in our foot or our arm, causing us to withdraw our, uh, our body part from the harmful stimuli. Now, as you can see in this diagram, um, that this, this reflex, as I said before, is a polysynaptic reflex. There is a synapse between our afferent nociceptive uh, fiber that travels to our interneuron, synapse between the two, travels between, and then synapses again between our interneuron and our um, alpha motor neuron, which is then going to travel to our flexor uh, muscle and cause contraction and withdrawal of our limb. Now, as with our stretch reflex, we do have an inhibitory response as well. And this inhibitory response is also vital in the same way of allowing for um, optimal contraction of our, of our agonist muscle, which in this case is our flexor muscle. Now what happens is that we have again the branching off of the afferent uh, fiber and this synapses as with the stretch reflex with an inhibitory interneuron. This inhibitory interneuron travels between the dorsal and ventral horns where it synapses with a different alpha motor neuron. This alpha motor neuron is going to be traveling to our extensor muscle and in a sense we can call it our extensor motor neuron. Now this is the antagonist muscle. We don't want our antagonist muscle to contract. We want it to stay really relaxed so that our flexor muscle can contract and cause maximum withdrawal and keeping us away from this painful stimulus. Now as with the stretch reflex, this interneuron releases inhibitory neurotransmitters which again hyperpolarize the membrane potential of our polysynaptic cell. And this is increases the threshold and as I said before in our stretch one, uh, prevents the antagonist muscle from contracting prevents a, um, a signal traveling down these fibers, um, prevents it from firing and thus contracting. And this is particularly important, as I said, because it keeps the antagonist muscle uh, relaxed and allows for optimum contraction. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so again, as with our stretch reflex, we have a third uh, pathway which travels towards our brain. It allows for our brain to process that uh, we have, in fact, encountered a harmful stimuli and it can be for further processing but um, it's, it's also an important for recognition that you know, we have withdrawn our muscle from, from a harmful stimuli. Now, um, we have noticed that in both cases, both the primary and the inhibitory process are polysynaptic reflexes. Now, activity in these nociceptive afferent fibers um, sort of leads to the, these things happening. If the nociceptive activity is strong enough, it is able to activate other alpha motor neurons. For example, say for example, uh, we touch a very, very um, like hot uh, stimuli of some sort. And the nociceptors in our skin pick up this stimuli. These travel into our, into our um, central nervous system and initiate a response. Now, it is able to activate other alpha motor neurons, further increasing uh, flexion of, of certain parts of our body. For example, if we step on a really sharp tack, um, we can get further flexion of the foot, um, bringing in other alpha motor neurons to create a sort of synergistic effect uh, of the muscles of the foot. So these alpha motor neurons can stimulate various muscles along various points of our spinal cord, uh, allowing for um, flexion of our foot, flexion of our leg, uh, and withdrawal of our, of our leg from the stimulus, even, even up to our hip, if the, if the stimulus is that. Uh, severe. Uh, and this may involve transmission to spinal segments other than the segment of entry. So often there are tracks that go between our spinal cord and that allow for uh, you know other motor neurons in other sections of our spinal cord to be stimulated by this incoming nociceptive uh, signal uh, allowing for other uh, motor neurons to be um, innovated and causing innovation of, of various other muscle types. Alright, so if there's anything we can take away from this tutorial, it's that the flexion reflex is a polysynaptic reflex in that our primary flexor reflex afferent fibers that are coming from our nociceptive fibers in our skin, these fibers uh, enter into our dorsal root ganglion, into our dorsal horn, where they synapse with our interneuron. This interneuron then synapses again with our alpha motor neuron, which goes to our flexor muscle causing contraction. So as we can see in our primary response, this is a polysynaptic response in that there are two points where we're having synapsing between our uh, neurons.